Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial. GIT Deposits Down Payments allows you to offer your customers an option to pay a deposit when purchasing products or services and then paying the remaining balance at a later time. So today we're going to review how this plugin works and some of its main features. But before we start, please make sure you hit the like button below this video, subscribe to our channel and also don't forget to click on the bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Now, let's start! Ok guys, as we mentioned in this tutorial, we will review some of the main features of our plugin GF WooCommerce Deposits Down Payment. First of all, we are here on a site we created for this tutorial, and I want to begin by showing you how the deposit option looks from the front end. So let's open one of our products, for example this one. Over here we can find it. Users will be able to choose between paying a full amount or only paying a deposit and leaving the balance to be paid at a later time. Of course, through the plugin options, we will be able to configure all aspects of the deposit feature. For example, making the deposit optional or forced, setting the amount to be paid as deposit, deciding how and when the balance will be required, and so on. So, let's go ahead and go over to our plugin dashboard so we can see these options in more detail. In this case, we have already installed and activated our plugin, so we will find it here inside GIF Deposits Down Payments. As you can see, the plugin has three different tabs, General Options, Deposit Rules, and Help. First, we're going to focus on the General Options. This tab divides in four additional tabs. We have Deposit Options, Balance Options, Customization, and Notifications. So let's review them in detail. From the Deposit Options, we will be able to manage all features related to enabling a deposit option for our products. And it is important to tell you that all of the settings configured here will apply globally to all products. However, it is possible to override these global options for specific products directly from the product's edit page. But we will actually cover that topic in detail in one of our next tutorials. For the moment, let's take a look at the main options available here. First, we can use this option to enable the deposit on all products. And by enabling it, we will find some additional options to configure it. For example, we can determine how to set the deposit, either make it optional so users can choose whether to pay a full amount or just a deposit, which is the example we saw previously in the front end, or we can make the deposit forced. In this case, users will only find the option to pay the deposit amount. Now, if we choose to make it optional, we can also decide whether we want to have the deposit option selected by default or not. And over here, we have one of the main features, which is the field to set the deposit amount. In this case, we will be able to determine the deposit in terms of a percentage rate or as a fixed amount. Now, we can leave these options as they are, save them, and continue to our next tab so we can review the balance options. Here, first of all, we can decide how to manage the balance order creation. And for this, we have available three options. We can either create balance orders with a pending payment status and have users pay the balance online, or we can create balance orders with an on-hold status and in this case manage the payments manually, for example, allow users to pay in cash directly in the shop, or do not create balance orders. Then another key feature is the possibility to require balance payment to the customers. Let's see, if we enable this option, we can then decide how to require the balance payment. And if we take a look at the options available here, first we will find the two default plugin options. We can request the balance payment on a specific date or after a specific range of days from the deposit. But I am also excited to show you these two new options which are available thanks to the integration between deposits, down payments and GIF booking an appointment. By using these two plugins together, it is possible to require the balance payment either on the booking start date or on a specific time range before the booking start date. And don't worry because we will be recording a tutorial about this particular integration very soon. For the moment, we can continue and move on to the customization tab. Here, we can further customize the plugin button, notices, labels and messages. Let's see, on the first section, we can hide the pay deposit button on shop pages and also decide if we want to show custom notices on the product page. 
and if we enable this option, we're going to find two different text editors. The first one will allow us to enter a message to show on products that require a balanced payment online, and the other one will allow us to enter a message that will show on products that do not require a balanced payment online. As we can see in this example, you can complete this order on location. Then, on the second section, Labels and Messages, we can further customize the different labels available in the plugin. Now, let's continue with our last tab for the notifications. From here, we can manage which email notifications we want to send out. We can notify the deposit creation to admin, notify the deposit creation also to the customer, and notify the balance payment to the customer. And in this case, we can additionally set when we want to send a reminder about the balance payment. We can set it either in terms of days, weeks, or months before the payment due date. Now that we have finished reviewing the general options, let's go over to the Deposit Rules tab. Thanks to this feature, it is possible to create custom deposit rules that will apply only to specific user roles, product categories, or products of our choice. Let's see, if we click here to add a new rule, all that we need to do is enter the rule type, then search for the specific terms we want to apply the rule to, and over here set the deposit amount, either the percentage rate or the fixed amount. And that's it. As you can see, we have already created some examples. Let's take the first one. In this case, it is a rule type for user roles applied to the role subscriber that requires a fixed deposit amount of $5. Now, for the moment, I only wanted to show you a general view of the different rules that you can create with our plugin, but don't worry because we will actually go over each of these rule types in more depth and show you some examples on a separate tutorial, so make sure that you stay tuned. Well guys, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. Bye bye!